Right, so this is uh, CoreMass 3, MEI, June 2012, question 9. I've written the question out and I'm going to attempt to squeeze my answer into this gap here. So, uh, the first question, or first part anyway, of question 9 is all to do with transformations of the graph. Uh, you've got two coordinates given on the graph and you've got to work out where those coordinates would be under the two transformations. First of all with A, it's y equals 2 f of x. So basically, because that 2 is on the outside, it's, uh, it's a vertical stretch, and it's a stretch because it's a multiple of 2. So all the y values are just going to get doubled, and nothing happens to the x values. So the answers are 0.6 for P, and for Q, when you double the y value but leave the x one alone, it's 1.4. Uh, the second one here, you have to identify this as two translations. We have a horizontal translation, uh, which is one to the left, and a vertical translation, which is one up. So, sorry, two up. So you've got to take one off all the x coordinates and add two to all the y coordinates. All right. So uh, p becomes minus one five and Q becomes naught 4. Right, so uh, this is the second part of the question. This is a test of derivative skills. It's asking you to find f dashed of x. It's giving you the equation of the curve you just saw. And then once you've found f dashed of x, unsurprisingly, it wants you to uh, look for a, a turning point. And it wants uh, another turning point because there was one already given in the question, and uh, that was Q with the uh, coordinates 1, 2. So first of all we need to differentiate this. Well, this is uh, a fraction or a quotient, so we obviously we need the quotient rule. So you're going to have to pick U as X squared plus 3, V as X plus 1, and you need to differentiate these two things so you can throw it all in the uh, quotient rule. So here we go. Those are the four things you stick in the quotient rule. And I'm not very good at remembering the quotient rule, but I think it's VDU minus UDV all over V squared. So here's VDU minus UDV. Careful to put this in brackets because you're subtracting all of it. And this is all over V squared, which is X plus 1 squared. Now I've clearly left, not left myself enough room here. Uh, so you need to expand these two things. Notice you cannot cancel off this x plus 1 with this x plus 1 here because you need a common factor to be in all the terms and it is not in this term here. So there is no common factor that you can cancel down by at the moment. You have to expand all these brackets including this one with the minus out the front. I'd usually leave the bottom one unexpanded because you might be able to gather the top together here uh, and refactorize it with x plus 1 as one of the factors. Okay, so we're going to have to go down here a little bit. Uh, when you gather uh, the like terms on the top here, you're going to have x squared plus 2x minus 3 all over x plus 1 squared. Okay, and the top does factorize. Uh, it's x plus 3 x minus 1, but we can't cancel off uh, anything unfortunately. So that's the answer for f dash of x. Let's put an f dash of x there, give it an underline. And it wants the coordinates of the te second turning point. So that's when f dash of x equals naught. Uh, well, this fraction can only ever be naught if the top is 0. And if the top is 0, uh, so I'm going to write f dash of x equals naught implies x plus 3 x minus 1 equals 0. Right, we'll move this. So, uh, there's two possible values of x here that make this 0. There's x equals minus 3 or x equals 1. The 1 refers to the turning point that you saw in the graph at the start of the question. That was the coordinates of q, 1, 2. Uh, I think I'm going to need to get the y coordinate when x is minus 3. So you're going to have to throw that into the f of x this question gives you. 
So f of minus 3 is minus 3 squared plus 3 over minus 3 plus 1, while the top is 12 and the bottom is minus 2. 12 divided by minus 2 is minus 6. So the final coordinate is minus 3 minus 6. OK, then that's the second turning point. And part 3 wants me to show that f of x minus 1 is x minus 2 plus 4 over x. So this is testing that we can uh, put x minus 1 into the original f of x in place of x and um, simplify it really down to this thing here. So it's a bit of algebraic rearrangement. First of all I'll write down what f of x is because you can't see that in this uh, view and then I'm going to replace all the x's with x minus 1 okay here we go and I've kept them in brackets so you can see uh, the replacements I've made and now we need to simplify this down okay well the denominator is easy because you've got x minus 1 plus 1 those 1's will cancel off to just leave x and on the top x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x uh, plus 1 but I need got that plus 3 as well so I'm going to go straight to the plus 4 and then if you compare this to what you're aiming for you can see here that if we divide each of the terms on the top by the x on the bottom you end up with this thing up here so uh, if you want to be explicit you could write down what you're doing this is the fraction split up and then you've got x minus 2 plus 4 over x and the job is done. Well, this is part 5 and this is a bit odd in some ways because you're being asked to integrate in a core mass 3 question and uh, you don't really need any fancy rules although you do have to remember that 4 over x uh, is something to do with ln x okay so let's see you're integrating terms split by plus and minuses so you can just treat them all separately think about what that integrates to think about what that integrates to and then this one and what you might like to think with this one is you might like to sort of separate it from the others uh, what I mean by that is this let's integrate x first you're going to get x squared over 2 let's integrate 2 you're going to get minus 2x and before I actually work out what that is I'm going to write out that one the integral of 4 over x well having written it out you hopefully remember you can bring that 4 out the front so it becomes 4 times the integral of 1 over x and hopefully that jogs your memory unsurprisingly for core mass 3 we have or even 3 we have 4 ln x in there so we've got x squared over 2 minus 2x plus 4 ln x and we're supposed to throw b and a into this and write the answer in terms of a and b. So when we put b in, you're going to have b squared over 2 minus 2b plus 4 ln b in a big bracket, take away exactly the same thing with a and it's a bit of a nasty looking thing and I'm not really sure, well in fact there's nothing you can do with that, you've just got to leave it like that I'm afraid. Okay, I'll just pause it for the last And the last bit uh, wants you to find an area using uh, the thing you've just worked out. Um, the tricky thing is the thing you've just worked out is all to do with the curve y equals f of x minus 1. Uh, and this question asks you to uh, find an area underneath y equals f of x. The same curve but shifted uh, along. So this is the area that the question is asking for between 0 and 1 on the original y equals f of x curve. We've got from the previous part we've got a statement for an area underneath uh, f of x minus 1 so we have uh, well it's a formula if you like for areas under y equals f of x minus 1 and we can just put um, limits in there and work them out well f of x minus 1 is a shift of f of x to the right by one unit so this whole thing here would get shifted along one so hopefully you can see the values of a and b that we need to put in aren't 0 and 1 but 1 and 2 a equals 1 and b equals 2 and there'll be a mark obviously for realizing that so 
if we go back to the previous answer, which was this, then we shove in our values of 0 and 1. So here we go. Sorry, 1 and 2. And it wants an answer left in exact form. So I'm not picking up a calculator. All right, let's just shove this down a little bit. It's just a case of simplifying this now. 2 squared over 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And we'll leave 4 learn to, learn to alone for a minute. And the second bracket, that's a half, minus 2, plus 4, learn 1. Okay, so overall, let's look at the numbers. We've got 2 take away 4 is minus 2. Uh, minus two and a half and then add a two so it's a half that is minus a half isn't it yep and then we've got fallen two plus fallen one okay and the lun of one is zero isn't it so the answer is minus a half plus four lun two job done